Paradox, the Kabbalistic Path of Expanding Consciousness, a Hanukkah Dilemma. One of the miracles we celebrate on Hanukkah is that our religion remained intact, despite fierce efforts by the Greek Empire to assimilate us into their culture, to abandon our beliefs and adopt theirs. Greek philosophy, science, aesthetics, and democratic ideals tantalized the Jewish soul, and many succumbed to their allure. Previous empires were not concerned with our creed. They enslaved our bodies, collected our taxes, and ignored our beliefs. The Greeks were the opposite. Abandon your religion, and you'll be free men. The cultured Greek mentality was absorbed by the conquering Romans and continues to function as the brains of our current civilization. Consequently, our ongoing struggle to resist assimilation by surrounding cultures is actually a continuation of our original Greek exile. This is the problem for which the Dalai Lama sought rabbinic counsel, how to stem the tide of assimilation that threatens to destroy his exiled Tibetan people. The Jews have survived a millennia of exile. Homeless and dispersed for thousands of years, they have endured both as a nation and a faith community. The Dalai Lama asked the rabbis, how can I preserve the integrity of my people through their dark night of exile? This supernatural strength of soul to resist assimilation was acquired during the Greek occupation, and it is precisely what we celebrate on Hanukkah. And it is still what we draw upon to weather our current diaspora and to accomplish the purpose of it. For this, our final exile will not end until we complete the tasks that Hashem intended when He scattered us to the winds. The Talmud declares, the Jewish people were not sent into exile except to gather converts. Yet this does not just refer to proselytes. Rather, it refers to all the sparks connected to the Jewish people that got separated from their root in the primordial shattering of vessels. In that chaotic era, worlds shattered, souls shattered, and also the Torah shattered. When the dust settled, slivers of the Torah's radiant truth were lost from Israel and dispersed among the nations. The secular wisdoms of the world are sparks of Torah. The Talmud asserts there is no truth except Torah, meaning that if something is true, it is, by definition, Torah. And that is the real reason for our expulsions and endless wanderings. There is no country or even county where a Jew has not dwelled or at least passed through. For to gather a spark, you must make contact with it. Exile forces us to interact with the nations, and in so doing, we absorb their wisdom. And when we connect back to our root, which we eventually must, that wisdom also connects back to its root, via us, as a kind of human chain, and everything gets woven back into the whole. But the task is daunting and a bit schizophrenic. On one hand, we must resist assimilation, which is best accomplished through isolation. Yet on the other hand, we must collect our lost sparks, which requires receptive interaction with the nations of the world. It's impossible to do both at the same time, isn't it? The voice of isolation asserts, Our personalities are impressionable. Daily encounter with the cultural norms of a foreign land affects us in ways we can't even know, let alone prevent. Without even noticing, we imbibe foreign values that slowly erode our purity of faith. And even if we still hold strong to tradition, our children bear the brunt. Our transmission to them no longer offsets the seductive tug of the secular world. The only solution is to create a pure counterculture insulated from alien beliefs and customs. The voice of integration asserts, but hey, that actually slows the redemption. For its prerequisite of raising sparks only happens through contact, and your isolation eliminates that contact. If we want to hasten redemption, we need to accomplish the purpose of exile, which is to gather the sparks that got lost in foreign lands, clean them off, and integrate them back to their root in the Torah. And that requires mingling. We can't let fear dissuade us from our mission. Again, the voice of isolation. But hey, the world is quicksand. You might go in with good intentions, but it will rattle your faith and chew you alive. Your plan will backfire. Instead of raising it, it will swallow you. Back and forth, a battle of perspectives, mutually exclusive and yet both true. It should be clear, though, that as a people, we need both bases covered. And so while we adopt one or the other as our way of moving through the world, we need to know that our survival as a nation requires both. We need folks to hold down the fort and others to locate wayward sparks. 
So while I've chosen this as my truth because it just makes more sense to me, I also admit that these folks do have a point, and I thank them for holding that poll. These and these are both serving the Jewish people. They are both promoting Jewish values, and they are both enabling the redemption, whether they realize it or not. And this paradoxical approach, where two contradictory positions are both true, was how the rabbis resisted the Greek occupation. For the Greeks idolized pure logic and could not tolerate the irrationality of paradox. Only one or the other of its assertions could be true, not both. Logic asserts that if A and B contradict each other, then they cannot both be true. This illogic is the work of fools. It lacks the beauty of Greek reason. Yet it was during the Greek occupation that the rabbis normalized a subversive notion called zugot, where two rabbis hold polar opposite positions and yet, insists the Talmud, both of their assertions are true. This embrace of paradox by the rabbis was a radical act of resistance toward the Greek worldview. The Maccabees battled physical assimilation and the rabbis resisted the imposition of Greek thought forms, another force of assimilation. It's up to us to continue the struggle, resist the occupation, the narrow-minded thought forms that insist on either or, when these and these is the living truth. The Hanukkah battle continues today.